and uh, just mm -hmm. knocked me out. I remember telling Tony, he's uh, one of the best flute players, I said, in the world. I said, no, in the universe. The best bass flute player in the entire galaxy. I brought Tony in to play at Piggy's. You remember Piggy's? In, in 1983, in Houston. He I don't think he played in Austin. Not, not, not any open kind of jazz game. Maybe, maybe Duck Skins. Gosh, I first met Tony in 1987 at Zilker Park when I moved to Austin and sat in with the big band that he was in with Robert Wilson. So I've known him for a long, long time. If we went on the road, Tony would always show up way early, like a day early. And by the time we got to town, everybody in town knew Tony. Uh, we'd go into a gas station. They go, "Oh, you must be with Beto and the Fairlanes." Yeah, Tony was by. I mean, we at your show, but uh, Tony spread so much love, and we love him. I'm Arturo Garza with Beto and the Fairlanes. He played with us for about 20 years. He's a real character. We had great fun with him, and uh, sure do miss him. We just had a gig a couple days ago, and I really miss him a lot. So. Tony, this is for you. This song is about you. I was out with Ray Charles from the late 70s until the late 80s, and I moved back to Austin in 1988, and that's when I met Tony. And uh, we just clicked off right together. My name is Rick White, and I lead the Monster Big Band, but I would hardly call myself a musical director. You're more like a rabble rouser. Summer of 1990 when I first moved to Austin and was asking around about big bands and who should I go here? And people had already told me the name Tony Campisi and I found he was playing at the Elephant Room. No, oh, actually, um, that probably was Momo, our top of the mark back in the day. Mm -hmm. Saw Tony and wanted to introduce myself and uh, we became friends and I was able to start sitting in with the band uh, shortly after that and became a full time member for about the next 15, 16 years or so, playing the Berry Book and writing charts and uh, conducting every now and then, or all that kind of stuff. So. Utah Hamrick. Oh, I thought you were going to introduce yourself. Well, no, I introduced you. So no, you and this is Rich Herring. In 1981, at the Montreux Jazz Festival in Switzerland, my college jazz band went there, and our uh, jazz tenor player was a Russian Jewish immigrant. And when we landed in Frankfurt, Germany, they wouldn't let him into the country. So Tony happened to be there, so he toured with us for two or two weeks, sitting in the front row and playing with our band. Pretty amazing. I, I was only 18. Fremden called me about three hours before the gig. He's like, uh, why don't you play with Tony's band tonight? So to come and see it. I was like, okay. <laughs> so that was the first gig I ever had. It was great. And I played with his band for probably two or three years. Big band. Love, love playing with Tony. Always a good time. Freddie Mendoza and I first met Tony Campisi probably in 1988 and uh, I was a student at the University of Texas at Austin and would go see him play at various places around town and actually started to maybe sit in with him probably uh, 1990 around that time and uh, been playing with him, gosh, ever since, pretty much, on, um, especially in Monday Night Jam sessions and as a member of the Tony Campisi band. But, uh, so yeah, I've been for a long time.
came to Austin in about 1983. I was the original drummer with the Nine Ego Jazz Orchestra, Tony's first big band in town. Uh, my name is Alex Koch, and I first met Tony Campisi, oh, probably in the mid 70s. And uh, he was, uh, I'd heard of him because I was my interest in the flute and the bass flute, and he was playing anchovies down on Sixth Street. I, Lee Leffingwell, Mayor of the City of Austin, do hereby proclaim. January 22nd, 2010, as Tony Campisi did. Help us, buddy. 